Hello, fellow lobsters. We are very ha- happy to introduce to you our next guest, Mr. Zafar Anjum, whose uh, latest film, Singapore Vignettes, was uh, out in 2020. Uh, the Singapore Vignettes uh, comprises three Singapore-made short films by producer and director Zafar Anjum. More Chai Please, which is in Urdu and Hindi, The Corporate Wolf, an English film, and Surf Man, Hindi. Uh, Singapore Vignette is a A tribute to the beautiful little red rock dot, which is Singapore. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Thank you for having me. And uh, Zafar Anjum is not just a filmmaker. He's a Singapore-based uh, uh, writer, a publisher, and the editor of uh, a, a series, Best Asian Series. And he's the author of the uh, Resurgence of Satyam and uh, Startup Capitals. discovering the global hotspots of innovations and then uh, Iqbal, the life of a quiet philosopher and politicians. These bo- three books were uh, published by Penguin Random House and uh, his uh, short story collection, The Singapore Tagalog, uh, was published by Red Wheelbarrow Press and uh, Kafka in Ayodhya and other short stories was published by Kitab, his own imprint. And uh, we happily welcome Zafar today to share with us and with all the aspiring writers out there um, his journey. Welcome, Zafar. Thank you so much, Zafar. And congratulations to both of you for running such a uh, beautiful and important program for the writing community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, uh, we understand that you have been adorning way too many hats like a director a writer a publisher and all that but uh, because this um, entire podcast is focused on publish like uh, the life of a publisher or an author we will restrict ourselves more to these two sure and uh, yeah my first question is how was the transition for you from being a writer to a publisher to uh, uh, you know approaching publishers and then becoming a publisher yourself Yeah, uh, so I would say it's a journey of evolution, I would say. I never thought that I'll be a publisher, actually. Mm-hmm. I always thought that uh, I'll surely be a writer, I'll write books, because I love reading. And uh, that's where the love for writing also started. I was inspired by reading other writers. Like most of us start like that, right? So yeah. um, imi- imitation precedes creation, right? So it, it just happened like that. Um, But when I started writing, I saw uh, the struggle that uh, first-time writers uh, have to go through. It's a ritual, it's a process. And so I thought that maybe I can play a little role in um, making that struggle a bit easier, you know, for for some writers at least, you know, uh, whatever little bit I can I could do. And uh, that's how uh, my journey as a publisher started. Because by the time I started publishing, I already had a ring style view if you may you know of the publishing universe um, because being an author interacting with a, a big publisher like random house having your own agent and going through all that process you know it gave me some insights uh, some working knowledge and uh, being a journalist like i always uh, uh, believe in doing more research and learning digging things out and so i figured it out you know how it can be done And also, if you look at uh, the timing, right, uh, since the 2000s, you know, the arrival of Amazon, uh, so many technological tools, you know, made it so simple and possible for self-publishing also, you know, for a lot of, mm. so you will see uh, uh, the emergence of a lot of indie publishers, you know, in the last uh, uh, two decades, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, so the transition happened like that. It was not planned. It was my desire to help others, you know, uh, especially okay. first-time writers. that to especially short story writers to get their books published in this part of the world and that's how i became a publisher so um you must have tried after pub, uh, what is that a penguin random house you for your first uh, collection of um, what is that mm-hmm. Sing- singapore t- uh, tagle um you must have tried some other publishers as well f- before you ended up with uh, red wheelbarrow mm, publisher um how was the uh, rejection part of uh, i mean did you get rejections 
and uh, uh, because no, uh, I'll, as... I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I think uh, we need to go a little bit back. Okay. So my first book, uh, uh, my first novel was called "Of Seminal Fluids." Uh, not hmm. many people know about that. Okay. It was a coming of age story, you know, and uh, um, so. And of course, when I look back, you know, I find it very amateurish and all that. But at that time, you know, when you are starting out to write, you think, okay, you've written a very, uh, you've written a classic, <laughs> you've written a great, you know, uh, work of fiction. And then I was, uh, uh, I was so cocksure about it, you know, that I uh, sent a copy to Kushwan Singh. I don't know if he received it. <laughs> I, was angry. I was very angry in my heart that he has not applied to me. Uh, I didn't even know the poor man he received the manuscript or not, you know. So such was my, um, you say, uh, innocence. You can say, you know. Very I, cute. <laughs> I was in my twenties, and uh, um, <laughs> anyway, so I, I sent it to Penguin, you know, uh, and I wrote to them that please let me know within thirty days whether you want to publish it or not. I don't have time, you know, to waste. So, you know, <laughs> such is the intemperance of youth and innocence, right? Uh, and most of the writers go through these kind of things, you know, um, <laughs> uh, between fear and ambition, you know, between confidence and uh, uh, and uh, uh, complacency. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, shyness, or I don't know, something in that zone, right? Whether they should even be, you know, showing their work to others, you know. So when I when I first yeah. saw. It, when I completed the manuscript, right, I got it, um, you know, um, bound by a you know, book binder, you know, <laughs> invited some friends, you know, to my house and <laughs> showed them the book. And I was very happy, you know, and, and it was an accomplishment. And I also asked them to read, you know, if they could read some passages. So, so this is how it, it started and nobody uh, wanted a publisher, you know, at that time, email was not there. You know, it was not very common. It was still very, you know, early days of email and all that. So mail the copies and this and that. So I uh, so I decided to publish it myself. So uh, I called something you know Times uh, Book or something you know Times Publishers or something and I published it. Mm. And I got it reviewed also in the Hindu. You know I was after mm. the editor. You know, and, uh, oh, that's fantastic. So there was this guy called uh, Hassan Surur. You know, so I don't know he must have taken pity on me. I used to go to his office. <laughs> Uh, sir, please, I've written this novel and uh, uh, this was before, you know, the Chetan Bhagat and all that started. Uh, so I was uh, so cocksure and then I gave him the copy and uh, he was kind enough, like a couple of weeks later, I found there was a small review, you know, in the, in the, novel, in the uh, Hindu news literary review, you know, and I was overjoyed. So that was the beginning, you know, so rejections and this and that. And after that, you know, after that, I... Uh, I learned that, uh, you know, um, becoming an author is different and becoming a writer is different. Mm. So I myself, I'll give myself 10 years to become a writer. And it exactly took me 10 years to get my next book out. Mm. And that was the house. So, so that is the journey, you know. That fantastic. Is the journey. And, and fantastic. it's very relatable. And anyone yeah, could... and when I, when, I uh, when you talked about uh, Singapore Decalogue, right, I did not go looking for publishers. So uh, there's this uh, poet, his name is uh, Chris Mooney Singh. Mm. He used to run this, when I first came to Singapore, he used to run this uh, writer's workshop and we used to meet every week. So um, he, he became kind of a mentor to me, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very and he was, he was doing uh, uh, publications. He was publishing, printing other books. So he, he took me on board. He said, I'll print, I'll publish your book. Oh, fantastic. And we got a grant from uh, uh, National Arts Council and that. Oh, you did got a grant. Okay, I get it. We did not have to, you know, uh, luckily, you know, go to different people. That My first struggle was with my first book and that mm. taught me a lesson. Mm. So coming to, uh, for example, Penguin Random House, they have done book, three books of yours and they're all yeah. non-fiction. They're not fiction, I think. Yes. And so getting a fiction to a publisher a traditional uh, publisher mm. uh, or getting a non-fiction to the publisher is is there a major difference and did you what did you find in your uh, uh, yeah there's a difference because publishers uh, even though they might have published you right they have uh, um one is there are certain flavors you know of the time uh, so you would see that uh, mm. uh, non-fiction is always business-wise you know is always doing better in india 
to talk about that particular market. And fiction is uh, um, uh, is not very um, favored in that sense. But there's a any fiction people. except young adult is not favored here in India. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, so publishers have yeah. their own uh, own uh, uh, measuring uh, standards, uh, business from a return on investment point of view. So non-fiction, you know, um, and even on top of that, you will have um, books by celebrities, mm. film stars, directors, mm-hmm. famous politicians, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, and then you have uh, non-fiction, then you have fiction, then you have short stories, then you have poetry. Poetry is at the bottom of the pile. So this is the uh, um, totem pole, you know, kind of a thing that uh, there's this uh, that exists in the publishing industry. So uh, once you start interacting with them, so even though I had an understanding of this and through my agent, and you know, I would know that okay, this thing is in demand and all that, but um, so once I learned my lessons, I understood the industry. I uh, I never approached the publisher, you know, with the book. So I first do a proposal, get it approved. Only then I start my work. So I believe in the principle: of first sell before you create. Oh, first sell before you create. Mm. Of course, you can't do that in fiction and poetry because you are uh, captive to your instincts, right? Yes. yes. You cannot just say that okay, my I must first sell the idea, only then I'll sit down on my computer and write the story, or write <laughs> the first line of my poem. No, it doesn't work like that. But in nonfiction, this is possible. Yes. And uh, um, so probably you know th- this is how things have moved. And uh, and uh, I after my first novel, I wrote my second novel, uh, and it's been lying in my drawers, you know, for the last uh, more than 15, 16 years. You know. I have uh, not looked at it. I tried to get it published. Uh, I tried to do different drafts, you know, but uh, somehow it's, it's not worked, and I'm not happy. So after some after two three years, you know, I just put it back. I haven't looked at it. Now I am looking back at it. Now that I have some time, so uh, um, so it works like that, you know. And uh, yeah, so publishers will take a look at it um, professionally, you know. It's not like uh, uh, they will publish any crap, you know. I'm sorry to use that word, but uh, it has to have some meat and all that. But as an author, I feel responsible, you know. Even before I approach a publisher, am I happy with it? Am I proud of it? That's my standard. True. If I'm not, I won't go. It doesn't matter. I don't have to get published. It's okay. But it has to very be important standard. point. This is a very important point. Over to Self Danya. Important. Yes, yes. Yeah. Danya. Uh, now, as you have uh, already become a published author and you are into even film creation and all that, how was uh, script writing different from your usual short story writing, or? Uh, have you written short stories and then transformed them into scripts or do you just directly go into a script? Yeah, very interesting question. Sri. Um, I think these are short stories and uh, scripting are two very different uh, uh, genres. You know? mm. um, film is a very visual medium, whereas when you're writing a piece of fiction, right? It's a, it's a very instinctual, it's a very uh, meditative space, right? You can write a story, you know, in, in, with monologues. With your, you can write a story with interior dialogue completely. But when you're writing a script, there are uh, there is a setting, there are characters, there are dialogues, there are transitions. You now there are so many things you have to look at. So two different disciplines, and uh, uh, you have to learn the technicalities, you know, for for both these different, uh, I would say, um, genres. And as far as my trying my hands in this is concerned. Uh, so you mentioned Singapore Vignettes, which is released worldwide now on MX Player, which is uh, one of India's leading OTT platforms. Um, so it's free to watch, anybody can watch it. There's no subscription fees required. So within that film, it's a, a, like um, uh, Jayanti mentioned, it's a, it's a compendium of three short films, right? All directed by me, produced by me. One of the one of the films in the compendium is called uh, uh, the Corporate Wolf. Now, the Corporate Wolf uh, is an adaptation of a short story. So I read a short story and I loved it, and I thought I'd adapt it into a film. So I had a team of writers, and I was part of that team, and we sat down and we dissected it and we adapted it mm-hmm. from a short story form. 
Okay. And in that, you know, you pick and choose things, you know, what will work for the script, what something that in the story might not work in the script, you know, so you have to make those decisions. And with the permission of the author, we could do that. So that process we had to go through. Mm. And you can do it by learning or you can do it by watching uh, uh, films, you know, mm. uh, something which has been taken from to, to the film adaptation, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can. There are many examples for that, and uh, if anybody wants to learn this, uh, they should read the book and then watch the film. Uh, there are many. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I was going to ask you: mm, yes. your film is an anthology, and uh, you have seriously been publishing also in print anthologies. Yes. So, um, any? particular reason for that. And another one question, added question will be, this film has um, short films of uh, three uh, other short, short story writers, you said. So um, are you planning to bring any of your short stories into short films? Do you have any plans or an, your novel into a full feature film? Um, you can share with us. Uh, okay, so two questions here, right? Let me yeah. attempt to answer the first one. Um, first one was about the anthologies, right? I do for the best Asian series and then Singapore vignettes. So, no, there's, there's no plan like that, you know. The anthologies uh, for the best Asian series, I think I've mentioned it in many interviews also that uh, I got the idea from uh, once I traveled to America. Whenever I used to go there, I used to see these best American short stories, you know, in the bookstores and the airports and all that. And I used mm -hmm. to imagine why we don't have best Asian uh, um, short stories or best Asian travel writing, best Asian poetry, etc., etc. So I thought there's a gap. And since Kitab's mission is to, um, you know, uh, take the voices of Asian writers and connect them with global leaders, I thought this could be a good platform. So in one, like in one volume, I can uh, give an opportunity to, you know, uh, 15, 20, 30 writers, you know, to showcase their talent and then package it and take it to about each, each other's literature because languages are different, right? So there are opportunities of translation, there are opportunities of fresh writing insights coming from writers in the region and then you know, people uh, abroad as well as in the region in, within Asia like to you know read these kind of stories. They get a sense of you know, what kind of uh, literary things are happening. So, and when it came to the film, you know, um, I did not plan to make a, a, a compendium or anthology. It evolved organically. You know, I made one film, then I made another film, then I made okay. a third film. Oh, you joined. It. But I always was of the mind that, you know, how to present it, you know, so I wanted to, so the thought came to me when I did two films, I thought I'll, I'll do the third film, I'll wait. Uh, so this has been in the works for the last four or five years, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I have not, I did not release the films that were made like two, three years back, you know, I was holding on to them. Mm -hmm. and I thought I, once I have the third film ready, I'll have a decent length of one hour, seven minutes, and then I can release it as a feature length film. Mm -hmm. It made more sense to me. I just did not want to do, you know, uh, a bunch of short films and release them, which I've been doing, you know, for other productions. So, like, there was one film called uh, The Sacrifice, which I did with uh, Shishi Sharmaji. Uh, it's on Hotstar now. So, it's a separate short film. I just directed it. Somebody else produced it. Uh, similarly, there are other productions. But this one, and I have been holding on to it, developing it for the last three, four years. And now it's packaged uh, as, a, as a feature length film and uh, it's been sold to MX player. So there are many thoughts behind it, you know, because uh, you are working in a market, you know, it's, uh, just making a film and releasing on YouTube, you know, it's, I'm not very happy with that. You know? If you can productize something and market it, you know, create some value out of that, then there is some play, you know, in that. Yeah. So that was the whole idea. Okay. Yeah, uh, my next question is I, usually I, any I, media, I, it be I, the, yes, sorry, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Which was, are there any plans to make uh, short film compilations? In fact, after releasing this, uh, I have been toying with this idea. You know, that this could be a series like Singapore Vineyards, uh, part two, part three, part four. 
and uh, to be honest you know even uh, before the pandemic started i was uh, um, in touch with the uh, uh, some other singapore filmmakers um mm-hmm. to be of indian origin mostly and uh, we had selected some stories already you know like, and we have been looking for funding you know so like four five directors coming together and uh, and uh, creating films and all of these stories so i already have the scripts but we haven't worked on it because we went to some agencies for you know some funding support and all that it has not happened yet but it might happen who knows yeah, yeah. okay we Sorry. hope it happens and uh, yeah yeah that's okay uh, my yeah. next question is see when when uh, any form of media if be it a book or a movie when it goes global there are two contrasting variables which are playing on it one is access and the other is authenticity when you want the book to be more accessible like the the volume of the readers to be more you have to make it accessible that everyone would understand it but when you do that and especially when you are doing it in a continental level like we are taking a, all asian short stories and putting it in one or all many Asi- different cultures and putting it in one if mm-hmm. you concentrate more on access wouldn't you lose the authenticity uh of that know. place yes i mean this is a very valid question but uh, um i take it more as a i think of it as a taste making you know is a taste making thing so let's say if i do an anthology and there are 30 writers in there and there's a story by jayanti right and mm. she writes about uh, uh, maybe an indian character in singapore just hypothetically mm. speaking so short stories are very good for that you know it's, it's not a novel or something you know short stories are good to give you a glimpse of you know some slice of life right and then the idea is if somebody likes jayanti's writing style or the way she describes things or the way she tells a story then at least then they can go and look for her actual books mm. in go deeper mm. but at least through the anthology right mm-hmm. i'm able to introduce people to 30 new writers every year mm. Mm-hmm. 50 new writers every year mm-hmm. so that thing was not happening in one platform you know i can't mm-hmm. think of any example here mm-hmm. uh, which has done some work like this mm-hmm. and now i am putting this all together in a in a uh, digital form and putting it on a website where all these stories will be so we already have like say 200 stories right mm-hmm. every year we we'll add like 40 50 stories to it you know with the audio and all that there could be video also in future right so there's so much potential in this idea and uh, all these writers you know get exposed you know okay uh, my work is out there and their followers can go dig deeper and connect with them and read more of their books so that is that is my intention basically that's very good um does kitab have any idea of um, doing um, audio books in future near future Yeah actually we we uh, I thought of doing audio books like 10 years back you know when nobody was talking about it mm-hmm. but then I was told that you know um, you put out an audio book you know at that time CDs were very popular you know CDs so we used to go to borders you know you would see the audio books there in CD and DVD format and people would so say that you know uh, okay you would sell a few copies they would people will copy it in you know, a CD to CD and then there will be huge piracy and uh, and if you remember that those days right piracy was very common there was the like kaza.com and things like that you know people used to rip dvds and things like that. so i gave up on the idea but i had thought about it then and uh, now i'm coming back to it so most probably with the um, with this uh, what i'm calling it tbas.org you know the best asian short stories org that website is already there I'm still building it i think we will have a, a audio uh, version of stories as well Mm-hmm. and i also uh, want to have like translated versions like you know somebody writes mm-hmm. english but is it available in bahasa mm-hmm. or in tamil or mm-hmm. in telugu or in japanese you know so that, that's a long dream so i don't know what when that will happen but uh, mm-hmm. that is part of my dream you know yes. every story you publish should be available in all these different thai cambodian mm-hmm. tibetan chinese and all these languages should be it's a nice dream that you're having mm-hmm. did the way you look at a book change when you became a publisher like when you were a writer you would have looked at this as as an entity as a separate entity like like it it will have soul but the moment you become a publisher you will have to look into the other 
you know aspects of a book like how well it would sell and how it should look and all that so did your uh, outlook on a book change as you became a publisher yeah, absolutely, absolutely so because uh, um, as a publisher you are looking at it from a, a sustainability point of view business point of view you know mm. sales marketing so writing is just one part of it right i mean uh, as an author you just write you give it to an editor she edits somebody you know designs it uh, and somebody prints it you know, none of your business you write it you forget about it then you get the book in your hand right in between you have some feedbacking process mm-hmm. but within that right I mean, the moment the writing stops the publisher's job starts right so as a publisher yeah. you have to find an editor edit it you know the proofreading the layout design and cover design you know then you have your marketing plan and how to release it launch digital marketing well, there is so much behind it sales channels you know um, and so many challenges that come with it so this is a much much bigger role you know in that sense and as an author you are like okay at one time you are working on a book but uh, as a publisher you are working on multiple books you know at any given point of time so your attention is you know in a different way and these are in a, i mean business wise speaking these are all products where you as a writer your book is not a product you know you never think of it as a product exactly it's a product baby, you know you see a baby is right right pierce nepal very famously said that uh, uh, each book written is one child killed you know like it's replacing book <laughs> you can either write a book or you can <laughs> procreate a child so um, we authors look at our own books you know as our children but as yes. a publisher it's more like a product you know for you because there's so many elements exactly. to it and you after you it. after you became a publisher did you get any proposal the way you sent first i have three, 30 days uh, can you get oh it's been it many many times that i i have a gentle smile you know i am not hard to them and uh, because <laughs> any stories <laughs> uh, uh, stories the sense that uh, some people will uh, i don't know there are different levels of madness uh, some people are so passionate <laughs> they will write the whole they will write the whole application in the subject line of the email itself <laughs> there is nothing in the content <laughs> the subject line is all the story you know sometimes uh, um, a lot of people write you know, and they have some books in hindi or something you know in urdu they want us to publish mm-hmm. so we have to very gently tell them we don't in local languages you know uh, as of now we only do english etc etc but there have been some 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 cases like that you know i don't want to go into details but um, i always uh, whenever we send rejection letters you know like it's a, uh, it's a tough thing you know even today i feel like okay uh, should not be hard to them and i always try to encourage them you know uh, i think your book will find its home somewhere don't worry about it. i always tell things like that because that is the truth you know if it has to find a home it will find a home so yeah, yeah uh, we, um, uh talking about your book which is kafka um in ayodhya there have there is a, a, a subtle religious tone to it right because uh, it's it's ayodhya it's the birthplace of ram and all that what did you do to not make it controversial you know to not make it uh, uh, you know um, affect any religious sentiment of any party involved or did you have to do that no so that stood the whole idea of the story was to uh, 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 basically now i don't know the story might have become irrelevant because now there's a rama temple and yeah you know, people were judgment right so the mm. whole thing is changed but i was trying to approach it from a humanistic point of view you know mm-hmm. not from this religion or that religion so i don't know if you read the story but if you read the story i have read, I have read it and okay. i think it's still relevant it will always be relevant uh, so because uh, because when you read a short story a fiction you have to think about the time it was written you have to that way it will really stand all the time so it was a good one um so yeah so that story is written from kafka's point of view right it's a fictional uh, imagination of you know kafka traveling to jodhya and then he is observing things 
and how he observed things in in Germany, you know, during the uh, what the Nazis did to the uh, to the Jews, you know, over there. So it was kind of a kind of a premonition, kind of a warning that you know things can go wrong. You know, uh, we are all human beings, and uh, maybe we can find some other means to resolve it. So it was a very humanistic approach to solve, to look at the Jodhya issue, and not from any particular angle. particular religious angle yeah. in the current times uh, uh, zafar mm, what do you think about uh, the self publishing you know uh, uh, versus uh, traditional publishing and uh, the role of the re uh, review uh, uh, you know in getting reaching the book to the many readers or getting the sales uh, increased uh you know yeah. those two what what's your idea what's your view on that please so i don't know so so i i am a self published also right my first book was self published and i always admit that you know i have nothing i mean no shame in hiding it and there have been many big writers you know who have their books self published at some point of time um mm. even uh, a very big german philosopher i forget his name now he nobody wanted to publish his book so he published his own book and um, now even till date that book is being read by generations of uh, people so, uh, so publishing is like i said is a business decision right for publishers so uh, the writer should not feel uh, um, ashamed of it if he doesn't publish it and there have been cases in history where publishers rejected novels like even successful harry potter novels right 30, yes, yes. 40 yeah yeah <laughs> and then somebody saw merit in it and they published it became a best seller and all that so there's no harm in in doing self publishing you know um, mm. but like i said there's a easy way and there's a hard way you know uh, there is that 10 year route and there is a shortcut which one do you want to take you know? when somebody comes to me even though we have a kitab has a division called simurg which is like uh, which does kind of self publishing help we call it curated publishing uh, even somebody when writes to us you know for period publishing i always ask him first you know why don't you you know go to your find an agent or you know go through this route you know take some time get properly published you know like why do you want to take the shortcut so i always ask these questions you know so um so again it depends on the author's uh, um, sensibility you know how much he wants to wait some people don't want to wait at all you know some people know that this uh, publishing is so competitive you know right i'll just uh, send the manuscript maybe it will not be even looked at for 6 months you know and then it will go into the slush pile nobody will read it and uh, a rejection letter will come you know so some people have these kind of things experiences also some people have sent manuscripts to publishers big publisher you know, for 2 3 years there is no reply so they get tired of waiting you know and they want the book out so for those cases we support we say okay and and that's why you know um, after starting kitab i had to start simur because sometimes i would get good proposals uh, which deserve publishing but we can't support all those uh, books mm. from our limited uh, resources so in that sense we said okay if you want to get it out by curated publishing go ahead and do it you know we'll help in the process we can manage it for you in that sense so so i don't look down upon it in that sense and nobody should actually right Uh, whether the book is published by a big brand publisher or you should look at the content if it is good it is good there is no argument about that uh, how it happens you know is a is a matter of uh, many factors yeah so yeah, uh, uh, how okay yeah. you can ask sorry uh, i'll ask next it's okay yeah yeah that's it i'll ask okay so uh, i wanted to know how uh, you are uh, you know you have been talking about uh, sending books through an agent right so mm. how important is the role of an agent for you as a publisher and for you as a writer how important was it to go through an agent it's important you know for um, if you look at the uh, industry outside uh, in the west actually mm. that's where the publishing standards are set right the whole uh, the, the publishing mecca is in london yeah. and new york and all those places um and that culture is coming here now right the, the agenting culture and all that so the agent takes away all your pain basically you focus on your writing 
uh, once you land an agent, you know, she'll do everything for you, you know, pitching and all that. They know publishers, you know, they wine and dine with them, you know, they know the industry trends, so they will find and manage everything for you in that sense. So it, it makes things much easier for you, you know, you just focus on writing, uh, they take care of the selling part, you get your royalties, uh, it's a, a happy marriage kind of situation. Uh, if you don't have an agent, right, uh, uh, then every time you write a book, you have to pitch. Unless you have developed a relationship with the publisher and he or she is in good health to support you throughout um, throughout your journey, no matter how many books you write year after year. So um, so it becomes a different scenario, you know, but not many people have that. So in the professional world of publishing, if you are a professional uh, published author, you, know, you will have an agent and uh, people will raise their eyebrows if you don't have an agent you know, in the Western world. So every author you know, gets tied up with an agent and then just focuses on writing and that's how things go. It's as simple as that. So that, um, Zafar, um, we thought of asking you how it was holding your first book. Uh, remember you, you were young and uh, <laughs> you got it published. Uh, self-published uh, the novel how was it holding that experience uh, can you share with us that is uh, um, I mean very difficult to describe because uh, that was a moment of you know um, like a dream fulfilled you know uh, the first book in your hands and uh, after having gone through it was more of a sense of accomplishment you know the, the thing that I, I I was born in a village I grew up in a small town. I couldn't even speak proper English, you know. And then um, having written my first novel in a language which is not my mother tongue without any guidance and then getting it printed somehow and holding that in my hands. So that was an accomplishment for me, you know. It was a flag of accomplishment. So that's what I felt. I can do it. I did it. You know, whether it is unreadable or it is utter trash, it doesn't matter. I could finish, you know, I could start with one sentence and I could write 30,000 or 40,000 words and tell a story, okay? That was the beginning of the journey, you know, so I, 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 I it felt it felt great, it felt amazing, you know? And I was, then the whole, there's another story of how I started distributing it, you know? Please uh, I share with us. I could do a whole session on that, you know? Because those I are... Used to, I used posters, you know, and I used to go with my friends and put posters on the walls of JNU, you know, at night. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, really? I'll, I'll go and go, the, uh, go and take the, take the copies of the book and give it to, you know, roadside book vendors, you know, like in Delhi, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in front of Priya Cinema or uh, Anupam PVR, you know, there would be book vendors and I would, Bhaiya uh, Yebi Rakho, you know, sell it. And I gave it to my, to the, um, there was a E.H. Wheeler bookstore, uh, in my hometown, you have gone to my hometown, Jayanti, right? Yes, Krishna, so Krishna. Krishna. One, so, uh, uh, and <laughs> Pandit is the bookseller, you know, and then I, I went to him and I gave him the copies. Okay, please sell it, you know, and this and that. Mm -hmm. And I never went and asked, kitna bika kya hua. I okay. didn't care about those things. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, but the purpose was to just put it out there, you know, in the shelves and people could see, you know, and you I feel know. that, okay, you have become an author, you know, and all that. <laughs> Yeah, one of my, uh, so at that time I used to work in a uh, management institute, so uh, so we even had a book launch, so my boss was very kind, you know, he arranged a book launch, uh, we did a book launch, some friends came and then, uh, so one of the professors, he um, took the book and then later he told me that, you know, this book ke piche jo photo hai na, I think that's the best thing of the book. <laughs> <laughs> that's really Thank true. you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he, he used to say that there is uh, uh, something called chapas, you know, chapas, chapne ki pyas, chapas. <laughs> I don't know if you understand Hindi, you will get the joke. I know, I know. We all, we, we, we both of us, we understood, know, yeah. have this thirst for, for getting published. published. <laughs> this thirst, you know, to get into in Hindi is called chapas. <laughs> so you can make a film. <laughs> It's a little great fun. Yeah, uh, I, I think okay. we will ask one last question before we go to our next segment, which is World of W's. Uh, coming to Kitab, uh, are you focused on a particular type of book for Kitab? Like, 
do you take anthologies and short stories everything or do you have like a type did you start okay, with, so. the, with the interest going into a particular type or was it open to all so generally speaking open to all so like you say we do now we do a lot of poetry also uh, we started with short stories uh, we do poetry we are doing novels but the focus is on anthologies okay so i think uh, because you know every there are so many publishers in the market now uh, you will see that uh, even in singapore right there are there is no penguin random house in singapore uh, other publishers are setting shop you know there are like 30 40 publishers now in singapore Um, small country and uh, so much is happening so i always try to do things that others are not doing you know i don't want to do things that others are already doing so what is the point you know it'll be like repetition of things so so i think the sweet spot we have found is in the anthology space you know the best asian series and uh, going more and more on that so you will see a lot of uh, new things happening in that space and i think that is one of the best ways to uh, um, showcase asia asia's writing talent uh, through that space with one book i can give you know so many uh, so much opportunity to new writers so that will be the focus but we are not close to anything so we are also doing business books we are doing spirituality we are doing children's books uh, poetry short stories always been there you know, our forte so everything is welcome in that sense we don't say no initially but the basic thing is uh, because we have limited resources right so uh, we we tend to uh, uh, focus on very few books going forward we'll focus on the anthologies maybe one or two book a year so my uh, i don't know maybe if i can do something like like do one book a year you know put your full energy behind that book, behind that author besides the anthologies So there could be a two three anthologies and one book even if one year if you give opportunity to one writer and put all your energy and marketing budget and everything you know uh, behind that author you know imagine how much uh, uh, influence uh, it will create at least for that particular author mm. so yeah. something like that i don't want to do what others are doing exactly the way you know uh, others are doing it's not the purpose of yeah so it's i think it's time for world of w's so uh, world of w's is nothing but a set of questions like what when where how why mm-hmm. and it, it's it's curated so that if a person doesn't have the time to listen to the entire podcast they can just scroll down to the session segment and just listen and get an a gist of what we have spoken through the session so the first question is um what are the uh, types of uh, um, anthologies that you're looking for or is there a type of anthology that you're looking for for your publication no i think uh, not looking for any particular type we already have uh, some types uh, like the best asian stories we launched the best asian poetry this year and uh, we mm-hmm. did um, best asian travel writing last year best asian crime stories um and after this we'll go uh, probably country wise you know like best malaysian short stories best pakistani short stories best burmese short stories you know so all these kind of things will be in the pipeline oh that's so in, very good in 5 to 10 years you will see you know like every country will have the best asian uh, uh, series named after it mm. in asia mm. so you can go pick up you know you want to read you know the best burmese or cambodian stories and you can have something there Mm. so i'm working on those lines so that is, that is going to be my focus so, um that's and very uh, nice and uh, um other than that yeah depends on if we get a good anthology pitch to us and if you like it we we will definitely give it an opportunity so how can an author approach kita an as aspiring author has a very good book maybe he w- wants to pitch uh, is it easy to a- approach kita Yes, absolutely. We receive pitches every day, you know, like from all parts of the world, and uh, um, it's very easy. They can go to kitab dot dot org, kitab dot org, and there are there is a publishing section in there. There are publishing guidelines. 
they should read the guidelines and just follow the advice given there. There's an email, they can send their manuscript with three sample chapters and author bio and all that. And we always reply. It might take some time, but we always reply to each and every submission. Yeah, for you as an author, uh, where can our uh, listeners find your work? Is there a particular platform specifically uh, for your for your work, or is it available yes. on various platforms? Uh, so I have my own website, uh, zafaranjum dot online, um, or it's a WordPress. Also, you can just search. You can just Google zafaranjum. I think something will come up in the first page itself. Uh, that's my website. So all the uh, details about books, you know, interviews, articles, reviews. I think most of the stuff is there. I've not updated it in a long time, but uh, most of the stuff is there. Yeah. So when is your next book due, Zafar, the writer? <laughs> when next book was, in fact, I've written three, four books already in the pipeline. I'm not releasing them uh, because they don't have the time. So I'll tell you about them. Uh, one is a commissioned book, another political biography. Uh, it's a very big book. Still researching it. Um, I haven't had the time to write it, uh, write that much. Working on it. Probably next year it might come. Um, but of my own books, you know, I have a book of essays that I have. Uh, I wanted to publish. And it's all there you know, for like a couple of years. Uh, there's a screenplay I want to publish. You know. Uh, um, so because of lack of time, you know, because I have, I have been publishing others, <clears throat> sorry, I have been publishing other authors so much I, and doing the anthologies, you know, I didn't have the time to uh, do my own work in that sense uh, or get it out. So probably in the next two, three years, you will see uh, more of my work coming out uh, and all this pipeline will get cleared by them. So, so, when, your so work, when your book comes, you can come again to LOL. Thanks for uh, sharing so much with us, and uh, we look forward to. Do you an, have any another? Do you have any parting words for the listeners, for uh, aspiring authors? My parting words are uh, um, always the same: that uh, you know, read as much as you can and uh, write as much as you can. So there are only these two mantras, you know, and uh, don't look back, don't get disheartened. Uh, it's a it's a journey of self realization. You're not out there to prove anything to anybody. Basically, it is your own journey, and mostly it's a journey inwards, right? You find yourself when you write more, when you read more, you understand yourself better and the world better. So, and there will be a lot of people who will discourage you probably, but look for people those people who encourage you, and keep at it. Don't give up. Very good. Very good. Yeah, if you could. Share a few words about your experience in this podcast, please. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was thrilled when uh, uh, Jayanti told me about this podcast, that the two of you are doing this. And um, we actually need more of these kind of programs in this space, right? The space, of words, literature, books. Uh, people have... Today, the attention divided, you know, by mobile phones and social media and things like that. And uh, there's no time for in-depth discussions, you know, explore things, you know, read books, meditate. Uh, so this is a good call and you know, this is a good platform where, uh, uh, where you can uh, um, talk about these things, highlight people who are doing some work in this area, connect them and uh, create more awareness, create, contribute their culture of reading, thinking, you know and uh, uh, becoming more rational and more emotional, empathetic, I think, most yes. importantly. We're yes. losing empathy, you know, <laughs> uh, because of certain reasons, because of politicization or different factors. Yes. So bringing back that empathy, that connectedness through literature, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And I Thank wish you. you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.